We're Ulla and Josh, and we swapped the conventional four walls of our home by the sea for the adventure of living on a 60-foot narrowboat. Join us as we slow down and settle into our new life, travelling by water through the British countryside. Hello. All right, gang. <laughs> so as you can see, we're not on our boat. And that is because we've decided to take ourselves to Scotland. So we've been traveling around Scotland for the past week and a half to breathe some fresh air, see some beautiful things, drink plenty of whiskey, and just take some time to reconnect with nature and with ourselves. And the reason why we've done that, guys, you guys saw last episode, and it was pretty full on. We did a lot to the boat. We've got a lot of jobs done. It was really productive. So now we're in our second adventure home. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for us to do the Q&A. So we've decided we're going to split this up into a few parts to keep it interesting. For those of you that have, are new around here, you may not know that we live on a 60 foot narrow boat in the south of England. We're currently on the Kennet and Avon Canal. This is our second adventure home. This is our little home on wheels. And so for this Q&A, we're going to be putting it into three main parts. So three chunky parts we're going to be answering all of your burning questions there have been so many of them mm. to split it up we're going to do a couple of fun speed rounds and then we're also going to be of course drinking plenty of whiskey throughout actually, starting with a cup of tea though it's still early oh, so i've gathered questions for ulla and uh ulla's gathered questions for me from you guys yeah. so thanks for joining let's go okay i'm ready are you ready all right let's get into it the first question i want to answer is a question that gets asked a lot. What made you decide to leave the conventional life yeah. of living in a house? There are two main reasons which I think we're gonna to cover today. The first is that we wanted to live a life that felt way more in tune with nature. We wanted to immerse ourselves in the landscape. We wanted a chance to be able to live off grid. Mm. And that is a type of life that we had individually been seeking prior to meeting one another. And then mm. when we met one another, it was a shared dream that we had. But seeing as we're both British, I'm also Australian. I have an Australian passport and a British passport, very lucky there. But seeing as we live in the UK, living in the UK, off grid is a lifestyle that is very difficult to achieve unless you have loads of money or you're a, again a wealthy land owner so we started to explore <laughs> options many years ago as to how we could live a lifestyle that was way more connected with nature and essentially off-grid and i came across boat life mm. i think the second point of leaving the conventional life of a house for me was also i wanted more time to to be free I wanted more time to do things that I enjoyed and also give myself more time to explore areas and, and get to and know yourself a bit more exactly yeah I wanted to find what it was that I enjoyed hobbies and things that I enjoyed doing because and I think it's easy just to quickly interject there it's very easy to fall into to a trap which we've both individually found I definitely have yeah working of, for other people yeah and working full-time can constantly working just to earn enough money to pay your bills to then never really find any time to figure out what it is that you really want to do with your life exactly yeah i mean the point of buying this boat it allowed us to free up our finances and have less outgoings that way we had less pressure to work every waking hour we have more time on our hands to explore and we are now immersed in nature as well we could definitely elaborate on that question so much more but there's a lot to cover so we'll leave it at that for now i don't know about you okay. babe but i'm bloody freezing <laughs> so one sec one sec scotland is so golden cut we're gonna get some whiskey guys and maybe put a coat on because it's bloody freezing yeah can we ah, okay this better i'm a massive whiskey drinker like i love whiskey i don't drink much of it <laughs> she does every night really <laughs> I once not took, as much as their tea though. Oh uh, no, not as much as tea obviously. I once took myself around Scotland for a month for a solo trip by myself when I was 30, when I turned 30. A one month of hiking, breathing fresh air and drinking whiskey. So I do love me whiskies. I normally am a Lagavulin lady. Mm. We've got a big bottle of that in the boot we've picked up on this trip. Lagavulin is more of a smoky kind of peaty one, isn't Ooh, it's it? It's lovely. But today, because we're, we're putting this into three sections, we've got three different Talisker whiskies that we thought we would sample, so. We did go to the distillery and grab them, so. Yeah, in, on the Isle of Skye. First up, what should we do? Should we start with the Talisker Storm? Oh. Right, you hold those. Right, as I'm pouring this, these uh, glasses, 
let me ask you a question. Did you really sell your house or are you renting it out? Shall I answer it? Yeah, go. Yes, guys, we did actually sell our house. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but it was the best option for us. We basically sold our house and used the profit from that house to buy our boat outright. So yes, guys, we actually sold our house. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but actually it was the best option for us. We basically sold our house, used the profits of that sale to buy our boat outright. Yeah, well, oh which, my God, that's a big cut. While Stella's doing the whiskey there, she's obviously pouring herself a portion there and I'll get that little bit. But really, um, we are super fortunate to be able to have that there. We didn't, we didn't have to take a loan out for our boat. We had just enough money from the sale of our house to be able to purchase our boat outright. And mm. that was very important to us because, as we said in our answering the previous question, we wanted to move on to a boat so we had a bit more time to be more free and explore and to get to know ourselves and do more of our hobbies and the things that bring us joy. So the sale of our house allowed us to be rent-free, mortgage-free. Exactly, Ola said it all. That's great. I think I definitely bought this one too much. <laughs> so, next question. What do you most miss about living in a house and what don't you miss about living in a house? To be fair, that's actually quite easy. So the things I do miss about living in a house is just being able to plug anything in and it working. So having the electricity on demand is great. That's a smaller one for you. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Things I don't miss about being in the house, I think you, you would agree with me here, is if you have noisy neighbours or you get bored of your surroundings and you want a bit of an adventure, you can just, it's so effortless to just move on and you've always got new scenery around you to wake up to. What do I most miss about living in a house? Well, now we've upgraded our electrics, which you would have seen from last week's video. We don't really have the issue anymore of not being able to plug things in, because we can. I'm Cheers looking... to that. Maybe a bath. I'd love a bath in our boat. We'll get a bath on the boat. Yeah. Simple. Well, we can fix that one. And the second part is, what don't you miss about living in a house? In terms of our last house, what I don't miss is the stairs. We lived <laughs> in a terraced house. And our bedroom was on the top floor and our kitchen was on the bottom floor. And so every morning, if we wanted to make a cup of tea, we had to walk down two flights of stairs to make that tea. Yeah. And then two flights of stairs back up to drink that tea in bed. And we now all we do is take two steps and turn the kettle on like and that. then two, two steps back and I've got my cup of tea in bed. So that's what I don't miss. That's one thing I don't miss about living in a house. So we, um, have, you've already gone for it. Cheers. He's already almost finished it. Cheers to no steps, by the way. Yeah, Love no that. Stairs. No, no more stairs. stairs. Well, I did have a tiny bit, let's be honest. That's lovely. Oh, that's really peppery, isn't it? I can feel the burn. It's delicious. It's warming me up, though. Yeah. Oh. Is there any more of it? Yeah, there's a little bit more of it. You keep going. <laughs> Don't mind, does it's any morning. Right. What did you do with your entire household of belongings? Well, that's quite simple. We just sold everything and gave a hell of a lot away as well. Uh, to be fair, there is a few in my mum and dad's loft. A few bits and bobs. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And probably scattered around your families as well. Let's get on to the boat stuff. What kind of engine does your boat have and how old is your boat? So we have a Vetus, Vetus engine. engine. Yeah. And our boat was built in... 1986. All right. So it's a good one. It's a good one. It works. It takes us from A to B. Did you have a full out of water survey before you bought the boat? Short answer, no. You should. I really should. Just a disclaimer here oh. though, guys. If you are looking at buying a boat, blindly. we do and everybody else will advise you to get an out of water survey. We spoke to a few surveyors and, and a few people that black boats and we were advised that if you look at, if you are able to access a survey that's been done in the past four years, you needn't get it out of the water again because not a lot would have changed in that time. Ours had a survey that had been conducted, I think a year and a few months yeah, prior. Yeah, just over a year. And we were lucky enough to contact the surveyor that did that boat and he remembered it. So we basically said, is there any areas of concern that you brought up? If so, let us know and we'll ask the owners and, and, and make sure that they've been dealt with, which they were. Yes. So we felt quite confident. We felt very confident moving forward. Yeah. How did you decide on the length of the boat? 
Was it the price, perfect size for the two of you, or just what was available at the time? I think a really important thing to say here as well is about the canal network and the size of your boat. <laughs> the size does matter here, guys. But um, the size of your boat does matter in the sense of being able to navigate the entire network. If you want to do the whole network, your boat needs to be under, I think it's 56 or 57 foot. 57 is the sweet spot. It's big enough to live in comfortably, but it's small enough to do, I would say, the entire the or entire. the majority of the, the network. I was a little bit bigger than that, but I think it works out 80%, would you say? A bit more than that, I believe. 80 to 85% of the entire UK network that we can access in a 60 foot boat. Yeah. So for us, we knew that we needed to have a relatively large boat and that's because I personally have quite a few hobbies that I like to do. I am getting back into my um, she music didn't see making my eyes. <laughs> and I make jewelry, I uh, do pottery, and I've got plenty of things that I like to do with my time and all of those hobbies if you if you will if you like they take up space and so it was important to me to have a space like enough space in our boat to be able to continue to do all these things plus we both like to do a bit of yoga you know we wanted a sleep space we wanted two separate living spaces mm. and so a smaller boat just was not going to be an option for us because we we didn't just want to live in a boat we wanted to live in the boat and again the second part of the question was it just what was available at the time that made you decide to buy the boat and I think, yeah, a big part of that was we were, you know, we sold our house. So we were essentially going to be houseless. So we could have stayed yes. with family and friends, but we really wanted to embark on this next stage of our lives. We're excited. Independently. We? And we know that this probably isn't going to be our forever home, but it's our first boat and we're enjoying it and we're loving it. We love it. Yeah. Obviously choose wisely, you know, don't rush into anything. We didn't rush into anything. We did a, we we did a, few, a, few a lot of boats and we done a lot of research and it really does help if you don't know anything about boats, go out there, meet boaters, ask them questions. The community is super helpful. All right, Ola. All right, I'm ready. ready, ready. So from you guys, why a boat? There's a lot of van lifers out there. There's a lot of alternative ways of living. So why a boat and were you both on board with the idea? Sorry, sorry for the pun. That's a pun. Yeah. I mean, you guys wrote the pun. <laughs> so we had obviously been looking, as we'd explained, for an alternative way to live off grid. And of course, we'd considered van life. We have a van and prior to this one, we had a Mercedes Sprinter high top. And I think I'd been toying with the idea for many years to live in a van. It's hard not to when you see all these people doing it. It looks really exciting. Mm. But it was about two or three years ago that I came across a few people on YouTube, I think it was initially, who were living boat life, living in the British countryside in a boat. One of the main reasons, and we speak about this a lot, even when we're in the van, as you know, we're in the van right now. We slept in this really beautiful, um, it's, a, it's a small, small little parking space parking area in this woodland and we're right near a loch just down the road here and last night you know a, a car pulled in and, and we were thinking god are we gonna have to move on because they're gonna be playing music really loudly and you know oh, they did briefly no they did you're briefly right and you're then right. they left but the thing that i love about us living on a boat is that we are able to stay on the boat and be in nature be in a space that is super quiet and remote without anybody around mm. and have the right to be there without being moved along yeah you feel yeah that's a really good point yeah so that's probably one of the initial things that made us think about it but also again it's the space thing it's the fact that we have so many activities that we like to do we need the space to do those activities as Josh also said the weather in England isn't that great so you spend a lot of time indoors so for us living in a van full time it's just not big enough for us to be able to pursue all of the interests that we have I think that's pretty fair to say isn't it yeah I, yeah and my, my little my little 10 pence worth is basically a boat as big as it is is a base for us um, a van feels temporary um, no disrespect to put somebody that's in a van and living full-time in a van or even not you know any other type of vehicle like that on wheels but for us we wanted a place where we could moor up we know it's safe that's where our home is we can go out adventuring we could take you guys on adventures as well because that is what we want to do on this channel but, but we wanted that right. base that's we it. wanted a home we really wanted a place that we can call home that we always come back to. I can't unlock your phone, so it's okay. Here we go. 
Okay, this is actually a really great question. Have you noticed any changes to your emotional, mental, and physical well-being since moving onto a boat? I think we'll both answer those individually. individually. For me, I have noticed a massive shift in, in so many areas of my life. Living on a boat is exactly as I wanted it to be. It has allowed me to immerse myself in nature, take more time to do the things that bring me joy. So this is a massive tractor going past. We're in rural Scotland, guys. Another massive reason for us moving onto the boat, which we didn't cover before, and I think it feeds in nicely to this question here, is that prior to moving onto the boat, um, over the past few years of my life, I was in an incredibly stressful period to the point where my mental and my physical, physical well-being well. was taking a massive hit. I was getting all kinds of physical ailments that I'd never experienced in my life and I am still in my early now mid-30s and although health issues can arise at any point in anyone's life, age doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it, I was experiencing so many of them quite rapidly that it just seemed like it was it, yeah. it had to be connected to the stress that I was putting on myself for me I have experienced a massive shift in my life since moving onto a boat since living this much more connected with nature and that's exactly what I was seeking and searching for to be immersed in nature to take more time for myself to spend more time working on myself loving myself breathing the fresh air connecting with nature yeah, I, I, I personally have experienced a massive shift and I think it's pretty safe for me to say you've noticed that in me as well. Like I am much more the woman that you fell in love with when we when we met in India all those years ago. No, absolutely, you are. I'm, I've seen a weight taken off your shoulders really. Yeah, massive weight. And I've seen, I've seen a really positive change. I literally have witnessed as well, by the way, with, with you saying about the physical ailments, I've noticed that. I mean, and I'm all really of, glad. I'm not going to go into all of them now, but they're pretty well all gone now. Anyway, on to this beautiful man next to me. Let me. All right. So my situation was very, when I was in the house, I was very unfulfilled. I felt directionless and I felt I never had any time to explore any of my passions and, and actually be more authentic and fulfilled in my own life. So now I'm in this scenario now, how do I feel? Different to Ulla, and I'll start by saying that it has been a, a huge, huge shift and change in life for me. I wanna, I wanna touch, touch on that a little bit, is the fact that the way I'm living now is completely different to anything I've ever experienced before. I've always worked for somebody I've, ne I've never had the flexibility or the free range of life that I do now because of employment situations. Now I'm trying a new job. I'm doing this, which is completely new to me. I'm living in a new way completely that I've never experienced before, being on a boat. I'm trying new skills. I'm trying to branch out. So I'm asking myself more questions to find out who I am as a person. So right now, in this period, it's very confusing, it's quite stressful, there's a lot of newness, there's a lot of adjustment, there's a lot of things fast paced that I need to learn uh, and, and train and get better and get quicker and more efficient at doing. So all of that is adding pressure. All of this to say, because I know it sounds quite negative, but I just wanted to give a bit of context that I found the tr transition emotionally and mentally challenging. Mm. Physically, not at all. I'm, I'm used to a very physically demanding lifestyle. There's been lots of highs, there's been lots of lows. But really, I think that, that comes with, with the territory, really. With I'm, any massive change in your life. I'm changing, guys, and I'm doing it for the better. Anything that's worth doing is really worth putting the effort into. And I want to say that, actually, I want to put a point across that if anybody is used to their way of life and they are scared of branching out and doing something completely different, take it from me, it's bloody scary and it's hard and it's an emotionally draining thing to do, but my God, is it fulfilling. I am so excited for the future now. I actually feel so much more life in me. I feel more optimistic because of the opportunities that can come from my life now. I'm excited to find my feet and 
looking forward to the future. Yeah, we hope that answered your question, guys. Yeah, I know mine's very convoluted. I'm that type of person. I, I go off in loads of different reasons. Oh, we love the tangents in this household. Oh, yeah, I do go off on a tangent. And Me that's, too. That's just because of uh, my ADHD. Right, so I think now it's time for a speed round. And I'm going to throw Josh in the deep end here. I've got a list of questions that you guys have asked. Uh, don't look. Don't I, look. I, I won't look. Are you ready? Oh, yes, yeah, born ready. Just born ready. Right, here we go. Isn't it smelly and full of insects on the canal? Oh no, I'm probably the only smelly one <laughs> when I fall in the canal. When will we see the renovated wardrobe? It's in the last video. Yeah, it was in the last video. <laughs> so check out the other videos. Did you find the mallet you dropped in the canal? The mallet was a rubber mallet and I'm really sorry to say I, I never found it because our magnet couldn't find it. Just wondering about the solar panels, do they do they do anything or are they just taking up space? <laughs> well this was obviously a question from a few weeks ago. Our old solar panels were not good enough for our use but the new ones now, I'm really excited. There we go, that is the pressure. Come on Josh, come on Josh. The old ones no, the <laughs> new ones yes. There, we go, there we go. Is there a meal you miss since the space is limited? Not really, no. The space is limited so I can't do things like uh, big Mexican dishes and loads of tapas do. kind of thing. We do it but we haven't got the space to, to cook enough. loads of different things and to spread loads of dishes out. Just... How many pairs of rubber boots or wellies do you have? <laughs> I only have one but the amount of times that I've fallen in the canal uh, and dried them out on the fire now, they've just, they've just cracked. They're, they're so really, for. they're done for. Zero. Ulla, Ulla needs to fall in the canal more than me because she's got two pairs. Where do you see yourselves in six years time? Still living on a boat or on a new adventure? Ah, uh, I definitely see myself on a new adventure, but... I didn't know this. I 100% feel that I'll always have a boat in my life now. I absolutely love it. Okay. Yeah. Is emptying the toilet really disgusting? The way that we do it with no chemicals, yeah, it's pretty full on. Are you going to stay with the blue paint or are you planning on painting the boat a different colour? We're not going to keep the blue. Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely colour. It's just not us. It's not a lovely it's, colour. It's not us. So blue, we don't like blue very much. We want more earthy colours. We want more natural colours. That's, that's the direction we're going in to reflect us more as people. Are you still leaking water somewhere? <laughs> Hopefully not. I think I've fixed everything. I'm going to say no to that one. What is the meal that you most crave ever? Quick answer. I crave all food. <laughs> What's your favourite place you have ever been to? I've travelled extensively solo backpacking around the world for a couple of years. So for me, I would have to say Mongolia is definitely a place that's stolen my heart. I do love Mongolia. And finally, have you docked next to any loud love-making neighbours yet? I thought we would be the loud, ah! no loud ones. Right, so that's the perfect segue then. <laughs> into the next round of questions. We need uh, another bottle of whiskey for that. But this next round is about us as a couple and us as individuals. I've actually chosen this one, although I hope you don't mind, but we've got the sky. This one has a smoky sweetness with maritime notes and spicy edge, which together gives a rugged beauty to match its island home. Bring it on. Perfect for where we are right now. Yes. Bonnie, Scotland. Okay. By the way, this is my first time around this whole country properly and it's bloody gorgeous. Right. Oh, bumblebee. Good, I love bumblebees. Yeah. That's even this time, eh? Slanger. Cheers. Mmm, smells lovely. Look at that golden colour. No, oh, yeah, it's good actually. Right then. So I think that we'll probably start with the biggest question. There are mini ones after this, but the most asked question about us as a couple is, how did you meet? So Josh and I, we met in India in July 2019. So it's been almost four years now. And we met in an ashram when we were both studying to be yoga teachers. I mean, that's basically it actually. I mean, how much more do we want to add? Well, I think it's good to add a bit of context yeah, though. Go Come on, I mean, it's us and this is the time yeah. to answer this is it, it, isn't go it? Go on then, let's, let's tell you all about it. During our studying, in the ashram, Josh and I both individually got really sick. 
um, I got really severe food poisoning and Josh actually ended up with a blood infection. Yeah, that was full on actually. It was uh, that that's for another episode in itself. That was that was very testing times so we were. It was a difficult a really difficult time for Josh and I just got very very sick with really bad food poisoning. And basically our absolutely gorgeous friend Dami who was also studying yoga at the time. He lives in India and he had his moped there with him and Josh and I had to go off to hospital visits to make sure that he was okay and also to, to make sure that I was all right as well. Mm -hmm. And we would borrow his moped and basically drive or Take ride. Take ourselves to the hospital Take, appointments. Exactly, over bridges, past cows, past all the monkeys, past loads of people on this like beautiful adventure that would lead <laughs> Little us. Little rope bridges over rope the Ganges. Bridges, yeah, to the hospital to make sure that we were all right. And we basically really began to bond over over those hospital, hospital visit visits. trips. So yeah. we basically got extremely familiar with each other. Comfortable, quick. Very, very quickly, and very early on in our relationship. We were only there at the ashram for a month, but that was every single day from like half five to eight o'clock at night. Every day with each other. Uh, and obviously after hours, we would probably hang out. But the point is, when you first meet somebody, you know, you do it a little bit here and a little bit there, but we just straight in with it, pretty much Solid living month. together, learning about each other straight away in, in such a very um, intimate way, really, you know, when you're poorly and stuff like that. So yeah, we skipped a lot of the stages that people would go through when they're courting. That's yeah. for you, Grandad. So, how long have you been a pair of lovebirds? So I think we just answered that anyway. We met in July in 2019, so this July it will be four years. Okay, next question. Living in quite close confines and working together also, do you ever just crave a few hours away from each other? <laughs> you start. Yes, we do, in a short... <laughs> Let's be honest, guys. Oh, tread easy here, oh, oh. buddy. I know, right? No, let's, let's be honest, guys. Living, sleeping, eating, breathing, going to the toilet, working, we're pretty much doing every single thing in, in a very foot. close proximity to each other. So that does get quite intense at times. But I think, I think it's really important to know as a couple to learn each other and to honour and to really notice these changes and you realize when when somebody's not right or there's something going on don't you or you can basically what i'm saying is you you do realize when somebody's in a bad mood or something and what we do when that happens is we just take ourselves out of the situation and go i'm just off to do this or i'm gonna go do that and we manage it in that way and and we never we never really fall out or fight do we no we have disagreements yeah, like but, anybody would do, I mean, eh? this is a very, we, we, we acknowledge that we're both very lucky to have found each other because we don't fight. We never fight, we disagree on s certain subjects. We're not fighters, so are we? We, not, we don't like confrontation. We anyway. both don't like confrontation. But there are definitely moments when we feel like we would like to have a few moments away from one another. Yeah. And so that was another reason why it was important for us to have a few living spaces in our boat. So yeah, as good you point. enter into the boat, from the stern. The back, if you, you don't know what uh, boat lingo. Yeah, from where we steer the boat, from the back of the boat. You enter into our kitchen, and our kitchen is also an eat-in kitchen, so we've got a small bench area with a pull-down table. And that's an area that you can, I often sit at to do maybe some pottery, some drawing. Mm, that's a creative area, it's isn't it, It's a creative it, really? space in the kitchen. But it's a space separate from everywhere else. Exactly. Then you move through that and you go past our bedroom, you go past the bathroom. Bedroom's a chill out area where you can take yourself. Yeah, and read a book and be, and be by yourself. And then we've got the opposite end of the boat, next to the bows, the front end of the boat, where we've got our dinette area and our lounge area, which has got our fireplace in it. So again, another separate space where you can take yourself to spend time alone. So yeah, I know it's only 60 foot, but it does feel like there's compartments there. And now that the weather's getting better, we've also got the outdoors. And having said that, because we are both very outdoorsy people, outdoors even in the middle of winter when it's raining. Oh yeah, we're always we're out. We're outdoors, we just, we like being outdoors. So people have said, any children in your future? And if so, would you stay on the boat? And do you think it would be difficult living on a boat after having children? So I think we definitely would love to have children one day. Uh, when that will happen, we don't know, but I'm sure it will happen at the right time. And whether we will continue to live on a boat, yeah. I, I, I mean, for 100%. me, I don't see living on a boat as any form of restriction. No, I don't. We definitely are not drawn at all anymore to be living a very conventional life. So I believe that having a child 
will just slip into the way that we're living our lives and if anything it will be a more aligned way to living our lives as parents living on a boat yeah. because we are naturally wanting to be more outdoors more immersed in nature and that's the way i imagine we'd want to bring up our children if we have them yeah exactly that bringing the children into the world if we're living in on a boat surrounded by nature It'd be a really beautiful experience yeah so. i think it's going to be great that's how we want to live our lives so that's how we would like to raise a child as well and whether we think it you know whether it would be more difficult than living in a house we have no idea because we've not got any children and <laughs> I think raising a child in any situation, guys, is it's hard. It's going to be difficult. So, so if we're doing it in a way that feels more aligned for us, it'll be easier for us to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. I got a question for you, Josh. Someone asked, why are you not married? You said to ask. <laughs> you no, know, we're on the same page about marriage. We would, we love the idea of getting married. It's not for any other reason then we would really enjoy having a really beautiful celebration of love with our favorite people around us but yeah. as to why we haven't done it yet why is that Josh? <laughs> well well there's loads of different reasons really but um we're not in a rush to do that yet yeah. it is gonna happen don't get me wrong you are the love of my life and it's gonna happen guys it's no surprise you know it, there is no surprise so i don't need to keep that from you or all these guys either but to be honest it's uh we're just adjusting to a new new um, chapter in our lives right now. Oh, yeah, is that, is that it? Is that it? There's a lot going on. Oh. Righty ho. Next question. How old are you? Me, I'm 33. I'm 34. Cougar. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Toy boy. Where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Margate because uh, my parents, uh, they're, they're very military, that, so I've moved around a lot. Never really lived in the same spot for a long period of time. Uh, where did I grow up? I'd say the, the place I grew up and the place that I call home is Lincoln actually. So big up Lincolnshire, I love you guys, I love my family and I love my friends over there, it's really cool. That's me, how about you? I'm a little bit more complicated. So I was born in Hastings on the south coast of England. I lived there until I was nine years old and then we emigrated to Australia. We first lived in Catherine in the Northern Territory, then moved to Adelaide in South Australia in the beachy suburbs of Port Nalunga South. I then moved to Cairns, far north Queensland. We lived in the rainforest. Then we lived in a place called Yorkies Knob by the sea. Then I moved to Melbourne and lived in the city of Melbourne. Then moved to Adelaide. Yeah, I'm trying to give people because lots of people have asked about Australia. Then lived in Adelaide where I did my university. Brief stint in London, back to Adelaide to finish my master's degree. Moved to Paris lived there for seven years, now back in England. I'm British, I have an Australian passport, I'm an Australian citizen, I lived there for over half my life. Now back in the UK. What is your education and background? So my education is a standard education. I went to, I went to school, I went to high school. I didn't go to college, I didn't go to university. I went straight into the military. That was my natural progression really. I've come from a very military background. I really appreciate my background and I love what it's done for my family too. After doing a long stint in the military, I realized it actually wasn't for me. So I wanted to find my own path and I'm really grateful that I did that too because I'm feeling like I'm really finding my space now. So for me, I've done many jobs by the way. Firefighter, in the military, in the Air Force there for, it was nearly 11 years actually. And then from then, I've been a tree surgeon, I've yeah, been a waiter, I've been a yoga teacher, I've been a barman, I've been a lorry driver, I've been a groundskeeper. Oh yeah, I've been a groundskeeper. I feel like there's loads more things I've done actually and being. And now you're one. focusing on being a human being. So obviously I've done, just looking back there, I've done all sorts of different jobs and just trying to find my feet really. So now I'm in a period of my life of exploring new avenues and taking this opportunity to uh, see how I can make an income in more of an enjoyable way. And the way more that's aligned to me. Yeah, more aligned with you. Yeah. All right, and me. I started my schooling in England. We moved to Australia, as I said. I finished high school in Australia, and then I went to university. So I have a bachelor degree in visual arts, majoring in photography and minoring in printmaking. I then went on to do a master's degree in fine art and in that I specialised in 19th century printing processes in photography in a process called wet plate collodion photography. And alongside that I also did platinum printing, cyanotypes, gum dichromate, bromoil, oil, uh, Van Dyke printing, basically all of the earliest processes in photography. That was my, my interest. So I did my master's degree in that 
and then following that I moved to Paris to pursue a career in music. I was playing music all throughout my university life and whilst in Paris I then realised having spent all of my savings that I needed to earn some money. So I fell back on my knowledge and interest in photography and decided to work as a commercial photographer. And six months in Paris then turned into seven years of working full time as a photographer. And yeah, I guess that's a bit of my background. Most recently I have taken the step into video and amongst all of that whilst living in Paris I studied organic skincare formulation, herbalism and an advanced diploma in cosmetic science. I launched a skincare company and sold products all over the world. And right now I am focusing on doing jobs with clients who I really want to work with in photography and videography and also taking a huge chunk of my time to really again find the avenue that I want to pursue in my life moving forward. So again we have consciously changed our lives so we can make space for what is now to come and what we actually want to invite into our lives. Get your whiskey at hand babe because this is the speed round. It's my speed round, here we go. So, I'm going to ask these as quickly as I possibly can. All right. Okay. <laughs> Didn't have to drink as quickly as possibly as you can. All right, here we go. So how did your parents choose the name Ulla? So um, my dad is half German and my mum and dad were looking through a football, a German football book before I was born. They came across a football player called Uli. If I was going to be a boy, I would have been called Uli, but I was a girl, so they called me Ulla. I like that. How many years worth of camera experience and video editing do you both have? So I have been a photographer for all of my working life. I studied it at university, so I've been doing it for 15, 16, 17 years. Uh, and I've most recently gone to videography for the past two years of my professional life. Josh has been doing it for the past few months <laughs> and he's doing great. He's doing so well. What cameras do we use? So we use a Sony a7 III. We're filming on that right now. We also use a Fuji. I can't remember what the Fuji is. The I can't Fuji remember film. either. We use that one for B-roll and prior to that I've been using Canon most of my life. I used to use a Canon 5D Mark III most recently until I upgraded to Sony. So what's your favourite spot in the boat when you need some time alone? I like the kitchen because the kitchen contains our creativity cupboard which contains uh, all, all the implements to be able to do all of the creative things that I like to I spend my time doing and it is also where I have access to the kettle to make myself <laughs> tea. So yes, kitchen babe. Yeah, that's so true as well actually. All right then, what computer software do we use to edit our videos? We use Adobe Premiere Pro. Do you plan on visiting Crick Boat Show this year? Yes. Wow. Have you got... <laughs> Sorry, I laughed. <laughs> this is meant to be a speed round. But here we go. Have you got any hobbies? <laughs> Firstly, I don't even really like to call them hobbies. I have lots of things that I love to do with my time that bring me a lot of joy. Um, so if you want to call that a hobby, yeah. that's, that's fine. Let's go for it. So yeah, I have plenty of them. I like to do ceramics, I like painting, I like drawing, I like reading, I like writing, I like songwriting, I like singing, I like playing guitar, I like drumming, I like making jewellery. I mean, yeah, the list is endless. <laughs> do you get tired of having to move the boat every so often, somebody said? Oh, absolutely not. We love moving the boat. Moving it's the boat my is, favorite time. is our favourite bit, yeah. So this person said, love your dad's music. Where can we hear more? Well. You can hear my fabulous dad, Ernie Blocksage, uh, on YouTube, on SoundCloud. I will leave a link in the description below and maybe even up here right now on a card for you to click on to go and listen to more of his music. Okay, so can you hear the goings on in the other neighbourhood's boats? Not really, no. You don't really hear anything and ultimately if it ever got really loud or not very nice, which we have not experienced yet at all, we haven't, you just actually. pull your pins out and move on. All right then, are you planning any trips outside of England soon well as you can see guys as we've explained we are currently in scotland but we're also planning on going to italy for one of my best mates wedding soon and we'll also go to spain to visit family and i've also got some more trips planned for a potential job that i may be doing later this year there we go all right busy 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 have you ever considered swapping the location of the bedrooms and the living room on our boat i think about it all the time do you really oh yeah but you know we're happy right now we'll see what happens it's like my mum, to be fair. She's always <laughs> changing things in the house. All right, that's your that's your speed round hey, done. All right, okay. So we'll crack open the next whiskey. <laughs> so 
so the next round we're going to answer a few work questions and a few cruising the network questions mm. and then i think we're gonna to have to call it a day first off what's the whiskey babe good question <laughs> right yeah so the last whiskey is the talisker 10. it's a 10 year old it's a classic it's the salt water of, of the talisker family it's beneath the deep peat smoke lives a rich lies a rich dried fruit sweetness followed by a peppery finish <laughs> you sound a little bit drunk <laughs> right probably am here we go I'm on my holidays we don't worry going. we're not driving anywhere after no we're not going anywhere after this uh, after this we're going to be making like a, a very late lunch and heading over to that loch over there and chilling in the in the not sunshine in the there is no sunshine the, the no. gray atmosphere we've had great weather until now actually and today has been the first gray not so lovely day so thank you scotland for being so beautiful scotland is beautiful yeah love really it loved it work questions cheers first of all oh. ask a 10 the hardier of the three most asked question in the work section do you work that no that's a <laughs> it's a funny question but it's a fair question because you know a lot of viewers on here a lot of our people are watching and, and yeah. they always do wonder that yeah like how can you make a job work if you're constantly moving it's a completely fair question but i think a lot of people think that we've just yeah i don't know maybe we come from a super privileged background and we're able to just not we work. don't or we don't so yes we work very hard but to be specific we we don't work for anybody else anymore i i'll start off I used to work for people. I used to have a full-time job as a groundskeeper and a tree surgeon. That was my most recent job. And before that was a yoga teacher. The pandemic took that away from us, as of many of you guys there. And then before that was in the military and then yada yada. But so now I personally am using this time to work on the YouTube and be more creative in that way. Uh, Cause I do have that opportunity to. Ulla on the other hand. So. I have been self-employed ever since I left university. I've always worked for myself. I learned very early on during my gap year between high school and university, I learned all of the things that I didn't want to do with my life. I've always known that I've wanted to work for myself. So Whew. I've been a self-employed photographer ever since I left university. I briefly touched on it before. I run a skincare company at the moment as well. I did a commercial job a couple of weeks ago. I've got a massive job coming up in a couple of weeks. So yeah, I still very much work. Um, whilst we live on a boat. But what's so beautiful about it is because I work for myself and because of the nature of being a freelance photographer and videographer, mm. I am able to choose my own hours. I don't work on the boat unless I'm editing photo and video. I work away and that's why we have the van. It's not only our adventure our vehicle for the weekends and longer trips, it is also Just my work vehicle that allows yeah. me to get to my jobs. Exactly. So, so I still work, yeah. Yeah, Ulla is still working. I worked really hard to get to this stage for us to be able to obviously get a house, to buy a house, uh, and then yeah, to finance the boat. Yeah, if it wasn't boat. for Josh, we wouldn't have been able to afford our house. Being <laughs> freelance, no one wants to give me a loan. So. Uh, that's the challenging thing. So yeah, there has been positives and negatives to both sides of our way of bringing in income previously. Uh, and fortunately, both of them have really worked out well for us. We've, uh, we've done well there. Yeah. That leads us to the next question, actually. Another question that was asked by quite a few of you. Is YouTube supplementing your income? So the, the short answer is, yeah, it is. And um, we're so thankful to all of you who are liking, subscribing, commenting on our videos and, 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 continuing, and continuing to watch us here. We don't make very much at all, but what we're getting is supplementing and it's and it's a really lovely a lovely thing to receive as well as all the coffees all the guys of all of you who are buying it's a really coffees. big point there we do really appreciate all of those little gestures it means a lot to us it and does it's helping out that a little bit of extra money is um is really helpful because as you may have seen we spend a lot of time working on our videos they do we don't just whip them out we spend a lot of time thinking about how we're going to put them together and editing them and putting them out there for you guys so it's nice to know that we're earning a little bit of money to help supplement all of it it's a great feeling um, and yeah hard work is paying off so yeah in a short it is helping now it's bringing in a little bit of money so slowly slowly we can keep going on and doing these videos yeah the next stage that we want to talk about is the network, the canal network, the inland waterways. 
a lot of people have asked questions about this and very rightly so as well because we were unaware of the extent of the network and how far that it stretched out and the place that we can go. Let's answer a few questions that people have had about the network. Uh, one of my friends Tom, he messaged me actually recently a question that's, uh, that we're, I can ask you right now actually is how far up does the network go? So basically from the very south there's little very short canals uh, down down south. Very down south, even that even in Dorset area, I think. Yeah, that even reach the, the channel. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. But the connected network starts around the Kennet and Avon. So, yeah, the connected in yeah exactly that's the best way to put it. The connected network starts down in Bristol at the Bristol Channel and goes all the way across towards the east and then starts working its way up north to the highest point which is close to Windermere actually in the Lake District. It's actually a really great app if any of you out there are super interested in having a look at the whole network and where we're able to access. We'll it's show called, you it on the screen. It's called the Open Canal Network. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting map. It will show you everywhere that we can cruise and it's a map that we actually use on a regular basis to sort of plan where we're gonna to go to next. Yeah. So check that out. Definitely check that out, it's super helpful. Are you planning on continually cruising the same stretch of canal or do you plan to travel further afield? Do you have any big travel plans off the K&A, which stands for the Kennet and Avon? Which is where we're currently that's cruising it, That's at the, the moment. canal where we are. So yes, we are continuous cruisers, which means we have to move the boat every two weeks at the very latest. So we can move as often as we like, but we have to move the boat at least a mile every two weeks. We have big plans to travel the majority of the network, or at least as far as we can go in a 60-foot narrow boat. Yeah, slow time. I don't think but we want to rush around it, it, do that's we? That's the massive point here, is that we have no objective to see it all as quickly as we possibly can. We want to really get to know different spaces in the UK and take our time with it. There's plenty to see, There's and, and that's another reason, again, uh, why we decided to live on a boat, was that because I, I grew up in Australia, Josh has lived overseas quite a lot of it and in, and in other areas of the UK that don't necessarily have access to canals. It's a really beautiful way to see England from the waterways. Historic England. Yeah. Countryside, uh, British countryside and you know, old uh, industrial revolution periods as well. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So we do have many plans to leave the Kennet and Avon. Um, but there is, we have a, quite a few interesting things in the pipeline for this year, so please do stay tuned, which um, means that we're going to be on the Kennet and Avon a little bit longer than we thought. Mm. So, how do we decide where to moor? Is it free? And can you stay anywhere along the canal? Again, we are moving slow time. So, if we have, if, if we, I mean, there are a few things that, that come into play when it comes to us deciding where we want to moor. So if we have completely run out of water or are running low on water, then we'll have to go close to somewhere where we need to be in order to fill up our water tank. To get facilities, to yeah. Get facilities. Um, we, it's not free. I mean, the moorings are free because we don't pay for a permanent mooring. But living on the network, we pay um, an annual for, license. We pay for we? a license to the Canal and River Trust. So we pay an annual license that allows us to cruise the network. If we want to cruise onto the rivers, which we'll be doing later this year, it's a slightly extra fee. It's a bit more expensive. But if you just want to stay on the canals, it's uh, quite a bit cheaper. Mm. Um, and also for national parks as well. Going exactly. through national parks is different fee. If you fee. want to have a temporary mooring with a marina, then you need to pay for that. But if you want to moor anywhere along the canal network, you just observe the signs and there are sections in which you can moor for 24 hours, 48 hours, or for the majority of the network, as long as you're not in a highly desirable location that has a, mm. a, a, shorter sty a, a shorter time period on it, you have a period of two weeks where you can moor, which is what we've been generally doing, is mooring in, in, in areas that you're have allowed a maximum to... maximum stay. Of two weeks, yeah. Quite a few of you have been interested in asking us about how we keep our van close, so... Vehicle-related yeah. questions. Do you keep your car at a base location that you come back to? So I'll, I'll answer that and we say, no, there's not a base location. There's not a, a place that we always park our we're vehicle. we're continuous cruisers. We're continuous cruisers. A lot of continuous cruisers do have their own vehicles, but there is also a fair bunch that don't have uh, any of their own private um, transport. So they rely on public transport. So they just, when they move their boat, they just move their boat. For us, we move our boat and then we walk back or take a bike to collect our van. Yeah. Or we do a recce of where we think we want to moor up, we take our van to that spot, then we walk back and then we move our boat. 
That's it. And if you've stayed with us for this long, we shall end it now with a final question, which is how do you get back to your van when you are miles away? <laughs> so the short answer is... Sometimes that's happened actually on our cruises. We've, we got carried away and cruised for cruise hours and hours and hours. Um, which ends in us going for a very, very, very long sunset, beautiful walk all the way back to the van. Yeah, I mean, either we walk and make a thing out of it, like a day trip out of it, or we actually just use... Something else. Yeah, actually, that's a good little teaser. Stay tuned, guys, because we've got yeah, we've 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 got a lovely addition to our our household of something else that will help funness. us get the van. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, it's been absolutely gorgeous spending this time with you guys. It's bloody freezing now. We've kept warm internally from the whiskey, but my hands are frozen and I'm quite hungry. Yeah, this is our first Q&A. We've tried our best here. We've winged it as well. We wanted it to be as raw and honest as possible. We didn't want it to be staged. We didn't want it to have a script to read from. Yeah, so thank you for bearing with us. We really appreciate you. And thank you for being on this journey with us. Without you, none of this would be possible. And we feel eternally grateful to have found such a gorgeous community of wonderful individuals. That is my most favorite thing. If there was a question, which I don't think anyone's asked me actually, what is your most favorite thing about this journey so far? With the YouTube. With YouTube, the YouTube journey so far. Mine would have to be how grateful I am and how touched I am at the lovely messages. Honestly. Oh, the incredible messages that we, we get, get from you guys. Yeah. You are what is making this whole thing worth it. If it wasn't for your kindness, your generosity, your beautiful comments, your just general loveliness, I don't think we would have kept doing it. So appreciate it guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Lots of love to you all, thank you for being here. Make sure you like this video, leave us a comment down below. I do want to finish off, I know I keep babbling, but I do want to finish off this episode by telling you that the next episode we're going to bring to you Black in the Boat and we'll tell you all about that. We're going to update our solar panels, we're hopefully going, going to update our bathroom as well. There's a lot going on, oh. but there's lots of boat related stuff coming back to you guys. Yeah. So stay tuned. Lots of love. Mwah. Mwah. See you guys. Bye. And a big thank you for all of you guys that have bought us a coffee over the last couple of weeks. Absolute legends. We really appreciate you guys. Stay tuned for next episode where we get stuck in to some more boat renovations. Woo-hoo! <laughs>